call me nefty, but that's why. <laughs> but if I may, with the permission of the minister and, and you guys, if I could take just two minutes off the clock, uh, let you know that um, I've had some, uh, like two months, kind of turmoil, let's say. I had to go bury my mom. That was the saddest part. And then on top of that, the weather in New York uh, wasn't like this weather. And I found out that my blood thinned. So it thinned. the last couple of days it was uh, cold, damp, and rainy. And I used to do a lot of walking. That affected me then. Uh, I had my flight ready to come back. And the flight was canceled due to the uh, iron. And I said, oh boy. That helped me back to prepare for the feast, but I made it yeah. the Thursday and uh, we had, I, get, I speak for everybody, it must have been probably the most wonderful feast that we've had. I, I, we always say that every year, but this one was special. And came back home and Mr. Satan wasn't too happy because we had a great feast. Everyone did. And uh, hit me hard with the... Uh, uh, I had a massive sinus infection and my nose got plugged so bad I didn't sleep for three days and my schedule, sleeping schedule got, got all bent out of shape. I didn't sleep last night, but I remember back in the day when I was, in, when I was without God in this world, I would party Friday night all the way till Sunday mm -hmm. and then go to work the next day real nice and did my job so why don't I do that for God's service which is this and I see a lot of new faces and that's nice and I, I missed you guys mm -hmm. and now back on the clock <laughs> <laughs> today I want to speak to you about the worst place anyone can be in but before that let's first talk about humans we humans are a very unique and complicated organism and each of us is born with a conscience regardless of race, culture or background. We all have a conscience and our conscience is part of our human spirit which tells us when we've done something wrong or offended someone or even sinned. It serves like a, so the job of the conscience is to let us know like a smoke alarm. When something's going on, that smoke alarm will sound. But when things are good, the smoke alarm is quiet. And when we're fine and when we're right with God, our conscience is quiet. But one fascinating thing about the human conscience is that an individual can sear his conscience. According to Bible prophecy, this will occur, occur more and more in the last days. And I don't know if you're awake or not, but we've seen that today. A lot of people with a seared conscience. We can see in our nation these days that this is happening. A nation that has so much money and so many gadgets, we see a lot of people with seared conscience. This is the worst place for a Christian or anyone else to be in, to exist with a seared conscience. So the title of the sermon today is a seared conscience. First Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith. Now this is talking to us because no one else outside has departed for the, from the faith. They're not even in it. Giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared 
with a hot iron. That's a bad place to be in. Now, it is important to know that the human conscience will not become seared overnight. It's going to be a process, a long process for the conscience to be seared. So, so what is exactly a seared conscience? So, you can roast beef in a pan before boiling it to, so that it can taste better. I'm not a cook. I read this. So, <laughs> you can do that to ha fresh hamburger meat. Put it in the uh, skillet or in the barbecue grill and you will sear that meat and that meat will never be the same again. So whenever, whatever is seared is burnt, it isn't the same anymore. So the same thing is with our conscience. When we suppress the conviction of our conscience and resist our conscience and continue sinning, then after time, our conscience is so seared that right or wrong will not affect us anymore. We just don't think about it. We will become indifferent to sin and maybe even get pleasure out of it. That's a seared conscience. A place that we don't want to be in. So when you do something wrong for the first time, your conscience will let you know that, whether you're Christian or not. You will know you're doing something wrong because your conscience is telling you that. Now that's a good thing because that means your conscience is working. But when you do it again and again, then the work of the conscience is reduced. Then you won't, that alarm will just like kind of stagger because you found a way to silence it. I know it uh, at the house sometimes when the alarm used to sound, I used to take a, a, a towel and go like that and then it would stop. Yet, smoke would be coming out. My, the food I was cooking was burning. Well, no, I wasn't cooking it. Somebody else was. So, but when you continue in sin, you will continue to silence your conscience to the point where you have a dead conscience. That is deadly. You have a seared conscience. Now before we continue, there is something we need to know. The conscience is not the Holy Spirit. I come from a church where they used to preach that the conscience is the Holy Spirit. But it isn't because the Holy Spirit only resides in us, the people of God, those who are called by His name. But it can convict sinners because that is God's spirit. Even if you never heard of God, you have a conscience. God created us all with that little gadget that will tell you when you're doing something wrong. And that little gadget keeps us out of a lot of trouble. It kept me a lot, uh, out of a lot of trouble, but not enough of it. Because I didn't have the Holy Spirit. So God has made a way for all to have that inbuilt guide that tells us right from wrong. However, a person can destroy their conscience and permanently silence it. That is serious business. Like I said, that's deadly. So how can I tell if I have a seared conscience? The moment I become indifferent to right or wrong, when things that used to bother me or bother you no longer bother you, your conscience is seared. When sin no longer bothers you, you have a seared conscience. If you speak evil against a brother and don't even think about it, you have a seared conscience. Because we're not to do that. We're brothers and sisters. The world will know us because of the way we love each other, not the way we gossip about each other. So there are people like this in the world. I, I'm the, I don't watch TV much. I don't like movies because they're not real. I don't watch the news, most of it, because it's not real either. 
but I, I watch some good news outlets that report the news. But when I do sit down and watch something on TV, I watch investigative reports or forensic files because I, I was into that back in the day. I wanted to be uh, some type of lawyer, prosecutor, something like that. So I get into that. And I was reading about a lit, uh, he, uh, watching how this man kills his wife and buries her in his basement. He got done doing that, then went upstairs and had a spaghetti <coughs> dinner. That guy had a massive seared conscience. People can cause pain to others, but don't feel two ways about it. That's sad. That is very sad. I've seen people suffer because they're married to a person with a seared conscience. I know of men who go to work, commit adultery, come home and kiss their wives as though nothing happened. Their wife is waiting for them with dinner, clean home, taking care of their kids. And they, like nothing, go back the next day and do the same. Others cheat on each other, then come home, and all is good. A seared conscience is something that you do not want to have. With a seared conscience, you know what you are like? Like a machine. With a machine, you press a button, and it'll start. Press another button and you start it off. Has no feeling whatsoever. Has no conscience. A machine cannot love. Who wants to live with a machine? Some, unfortunately some ladies do, some men do too. I know of women who are married to good men and then they go out and put them down with their friends and say all kind of evil things about their husband. A machine does not care or empathize. How about bearing false witness on someone? I see in another case where this young lady accused this gentleman of rape. It wasn't true. That man spent something like 30 years in prison until the truth came out. Yet that girl went about her life as though she didn't do anything. As though she did get raped. That's a seared conscience. If you lie, your conscience needs to be disturbed. If you steal, your conscience needs to be disturbed. Ministers out there that I know personally are thieves. They take money from widows, from people that are terminally ill. They promise them healing if they sow a seed. They become millionaires, live in mansions, flying airplanes, massive cars, and they're stealing from the people. Seared conscience in the name of God, they claim. A seared conscience will wipe the life out of your soul, will wipe the life out of your humanity. I used to fight back in the day. And I remember having my opponent in bad shape, hitting my opponent while he was a little defenseless, throwing back, but a little defenseless. There were times where I had to look at the ref. What do you want me to do, kill this guy? I couldn't do it. I didn't have the killer instinct. But I know other friends and other fighters who would take an opponent in a corner and beat him uh, while he was unconscious and continue to beat him. And the ref would stand there and wait till the man drops. A couple of them died. It's a seared conscience, even in a sport like that. These are the true walking dead. We Christians should never come to this place where our conscience is silenced. Because when your conscience is silenced, you're in dead territory, dead zone. Some Christians will still demoralize others, hurt others, and feel nothing of it. That's a seared conscience. When Christ returns to judge and to give to people accordingly, 
those so-called Christians with a seared conscience will not escape this. They will not escape the wrath of God. The life of a Christian should never come to this. Don't, don't think this only happens to unbelievers with a seared conscience. Just because we are Christians, we, we don't automatically have a clean conscience and a good conscience and do things right all the time. We need to watch our lives. We need to watch what's going on and growing inside of us, in our lives and in our conscience. So brethren, the big day draws nigh. Let's not ever come to this place a seared conscience. Have a great Sabbath and so nice to see you again.